Hello! Before we start diving into unit testing, we should clarify what are schedulers in ArcGIS. You already know that observables produce values over time. And the moment when exactly value will be emitted is controlled by special entity, scheduler. Knowing how schedulers work are extremely important in understanding how to unit test your async code. Possibly you already know that topic, but please don't skip. Recalling that will help us to be on the same page. To understand how schedulers work, we have to recall what is JavaScript event loop in the browser. The main entities here are macrotask, microtask and event loop macrotasks queue. Let's take a look at executed code to the left. We have three console log calls here. First is unwrapped, second is wrapped in set timeout, and third is called in promise resolve callback. As you see in a browser console, first unwrapped console log is executed. On the second place we have console log from promise callback, and then on the third place we have console log from set timeout. Why? It is simple. First console log is executed in current active macro task. Console log from set timeout will be run in the next macro task, so browser put it in a queue. But promise callback is scheduled to be run in micro task just after current active macro task. So console log 3 runs before console log 2. That's why output order is 1, 3 and then 2. And scheduling when values will be emitted is the main task of schedulers. Look at the code to the left. We use ArcGIS of function to emit values. And in some cases I provided second optional scheduler param. This code works the same way as code on previous slide. First value is emitted synchronously. Second value is scheduled in event loop macro tasks queue. And third one will be emitted at micro task just after current macro task. Providing scheduler to ArcGIS of function actually does the trick. Let's take a look at official definition from ArcGIS GitHub repo. A scheduler is a data structure that controls when emissions are delivered. It means that we can emit data synchronously if we don't use scheduler or use queue scheduler. We can schedule emission in a micro task just after current macro task if to use ASAP scheduler. When we use async scheduler, data will be emitted in other macro task at once or with some specified delay. Also data emission can be aligned with repaint browser event if we use animation frame scheduler. The main challenges we can meet during unit testing of observables are Data are emitted asynchronously. More than one value will be emitted. Order of values may matter. Values are emitted with specified delay and sometimes in prod cases this delay can be quite big. Translating these challenges to the browser event loop terminology, we may say that we should be ready to write unit tests for such cases. For synchronous code, but testing sync code is relatively easy. For async code that emits in next micro task, like promises do. For async code that emits in next macro task, which is placed in event loop queue, possibly with some delay. Also combinations of observables, which are frequently used in Angular code. Here are the examples I will be using throughout the course. It includes simple range generation code, code with repetitive logic, code with the bounce logic and combinations of streams. Also, there are two more special schedulers. Virtual time scheduler allows to execute all scheduled emissions tasks instantly, keeping the emission order. Test scheduler is a subclass of virtual time scheduler, but with additional methods for unit testing. We will talk about them a lot in our future lessons. One more thing I wanted you to pay attention to. ArcGIS provides scheduler classes, but also you can get existing instances of scheduler classes, which are used by ArcGIS operations internally. Getting these instances will help us to change scheduler behavior for testing purposes, 
We will talk about it more in the next lessons too. The rule of thumb here is, if it is a class, its name starts with capital letter. If it is an instance, then its name starts with a small letter. If you are new to the topic of browser event loop or IRACJS schedulers, then before you continue watching next lessons, take a look at proposed videos. You will get good knowledge, which will also help you in further JavaScript development. That's it about schedulers. And in the next lesson, we will start reviewing methods for observable unit testing.